Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Shifting the Aggregate Supply Curve In this video we're going to look at the key macroeconomic identity of aggregate supply and we'll look at this in both the short run and the long run. So aggregate supply is the total quantity of goods and services that firms produce and sell at any given price. It is driven by a number of components, namely labour, capital, human capital, natural resources, technology or productivity, and input costs. We will also link into this uh, the idea of price expectations. So in the long run, LRAS, the long run aggregate supply is a function of labour, capital, human capital, and natural resources, and these are bound together by technology or productivity, which is the B factor in here. The short run aggregate supply curve is made up of the natural rate of output, so there's a set natural rate in the economy, and the difference between the average price level and the expected price level. And we'll explain this difference in a while in terms of how that shifts the supply curve. So, a couple of definitions first. The labour force is the total number of workers, including both the employed and the unemployed in the economy. So, the potential workforce as such, if everyone was working in the economy. We have our physical capital as well, which is the stock of equipment and structures that are used to produce goods and services. Uh, so these would be all new uh, capital stock in that case. We have human capital as well, the other version of capital, which is the knowledge and skills that workers acquire through education, training and experience. So these are the skills then that you can use to produce more. Natural resources refer to inputs into the production that are provided by nature, nature such as land, rivers, mineral deposits, things of this, this nature, oil. Technology and productivity then is the understanding of the best way to produce goods and services. So how are these factors of production brought together? How efficiently are they used in the production process? And we have our price expectations here, EPL. So we have the expected price level in the economy. We have actual price level, APL. And we have the natural rate of output as well, NRQ. And these will be re related together when it comes to our shifting of the supply curve. So we'll look at this uh, supply curve then. We start off with price level up on the y-axis. We have GDP down on the x-axis. And we have an upward sloping line in the short run showing that as prices go up, GDP and supply goes up as well. We have our arrows indicating now that the supply curve can shift rightwards, which would indicate an increase in aggregate supply. So for a rightward shift here, but we also have a leftward shift indicated just now. And this leftward shift, AS2, is going to show us this. This is when aggregate supply decreases in the economy. And there are a number of drivers in terms of this. So the drivers would actually come from the long run initially. So what happens in the long run then? Well, the long run again, we look at the relationship between price level and GDP, but in the long run, the aggregate supply curve is vertical. This means that there is no relationship between price and GDP. It's independent of price. Our long run aggregate supply curve can also shift rightwards indicating an increase in aggregate supply, shown here as AS1. And we can also show a leftward shift, indicating a decrease in long-run aggregate supply, as shown by AS2. So the drivers of this, what is driving the supply curve right or left? Well, a rightward shift of the aggregate supply curve can be caused by, initially, the labour force and changes in the labour force. So if the labour force increases, this will shift the AS curve to the right. This can happen for a number of reasons. For example, population increasing may cause the labour force to increase. You may have higher labour force participation, perhaps a higher female participation. You may have higher wages enticing back discouraged workers. But when labour force increases, generally the aggregate supply curve shifts to the right. We also have capital in this case, and this means physical capital. So when this increases, again, our aggregate supply curve, be it the short or long run, increases as well. 
And this could be, for example, due to investment in infrastructure. So for example, investment in a up-to-date and efficient road network with motorways, etc., or uh, investment in a high quality and advanced broadband network. In that case, that should increase the aggregate supply of the economy, and again, would shift the AS curve to the right. We also have human capital here, and if human capital increases, we mean here the skill set and the training of a workforce. If that increases, again, your aggregate supply curve would shift upwards. This would happen due to more investment in education, for example, more training programs specific to sectors where there is work and where there's high productivity and so on. So this kind of focus training would increase aggregate supply. Also, depending on how a country is treating its natural resources, this may increase the aggregate supply curve as well. So what we have is maybe mineral deposits, maybe clean water for waste removal, uh, investment in timber and forests and so on. So these, will, these potential resources would increase the aggregate supply. We also have the binding factor here, technology that binds the other factors together, productivity as well. And of course, this can increase and increase in the supply of an economy. This can be due to maybe domestic firms uh, spending on R&D and increasing their technological base. Maybe you have foreign direct investment coming in that improves the productivity and the technology base in your country as well. So it can come from internal and external sources. Price expectations is the final one. And what we mean here is that if price expectations uh, in terms of expected price levels were to decrease in the economy, this would actually increase the aggregate supply short run of the economy. Okay, if we move on to a negative shock uh, on the supply side, which is a leftward shift of the aggregate supply curve, again, we have the same kind of determinants, but we look at them differently. So we have our labor supply curve here, or labor supply in general, and if the labor supply force or the labor supply decreased in the economy, possibly due to things such as union action, where you have unions with very strong negotiating power that increase uh, the wage level in the economy, and that may lead to a certain type of unemployment uh, based around structural unemployment. In this case as well, you might have discouraged workers who try to find a job and can't find a job and drop out of the labor force. All of these would cause the aggregate supply curve to shift leftwards in that case. Second up is capital and the physical infrastructure of the economy. If this were to degrade and deteriorate over time, what we would see is a leftward shift of aggregate supply. And this could shift leftwards if there was a recession and the government and companies in general decided to invest less in their infrastructure over time and their capital. Uh, we also have human capital, and if this were to degrade over time, we'd also see a negative shock to aggregate supply. So this may happen, for example, if a country brought in a loan system for students that burdened them with very high loans, which they had to pay back and didn't finish their studies in some cases due to debt, or maybe the workforce is in the wrong area, such as construction, whereas jobs might be in technology. We also finally have natural resources, which can degrade over time, for example, deforestation, pollution. Uh, if it's your fish stocks, there can be too much uh, uh, fishing and depletion of your natural resources in that case there. So all of these would shift the aggregate supply curve to the left. The binding factor again, your technology, this can degrade over time as well if there's not sufficient expenditure on research and development, if this isn't incentivized in your economy or productivity may drop due to disincentivized workforce and things of this nature. So that would decrease the aggregate supply curve and finally price expectations. If these expectations were to rise compared to the average price level in the economy, 
that would also cause the aggregate supply curve to shift leftwards to decrease aggregate supply in that case. That's if expectations rise, price expectations rise in the economy. So once again, the summary of all these is a left and rightward shift of aggregate supply depending on the underpinning components of short and long run supply. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.